Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and bienvenidos to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm Richard Concepcion. Fighting cancer takes more than just medication, chemotherapy, and a great team of doctors by your side. It requires a strong mental power, faith, hope, love, family, and friend support, and the most important, a positive attitude. Today's guest is Dr. Melvis Stans. She's here to share her personal experience with fighting against cancer. Her courageous and positive attitude have motivated and inspired others to fight cancer and to stay healthy. Bienvenida, welcome to the studio. Gracias, gracias. All right, tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, tell me when did you find out that you had cancer? Oh, hi, thanks every, everyone. I'm a peak performance psychologist, so I help people move forward in life um, with different mechanisms. I'm a psychophysiologist professor too. I found out I had cancer because I went to the store with my daughter, my teenager, and we were trying different things. And uh, when I tried something on, I thought there was like a wire that hurt me around here, so I didn't buy it. But the next morning, intuitively, somehow, I felt like I have to touch there. Something was hurting me. When I touched, I realized I had like a marble. And I was shocked. So I ran to my daughter and I asked her if she could sense it. And she was like, Mom, Mommy, you have a ball there. So gladly, my sister, she had cancer. My mom, too. They had twice breast cancer and another type of cancer. My mom passed. It, she had told me, if you ever find out, just drive to the hospital. That's exactly what I did. I got in the car and I drove to Tripler. Wow. And I told them, yeah, I'm a retired lieutenant colonel. I worked here at Tripler for half a decade. Can I just wait until someone sees me? And well, they you did. See, this is your second time at the show. The first time you came in, we were talking about biofeedback and, uh, and all that great stuff and helping others within the community with your clinic. And uh, now you're going through this situation. Uh, how that affect you and your family and, and the job? Oh, it affected big time. My family, they've been great supporters. Uh, my husband, actually, he sits with me every time I go to chemotherapy at Tripler, like for five hours. He just asks for medical leave and he sits next to me. My daughter has been very supportive. My family in Puerto Rico as well. Um, what else do you want to know? Yeah, but uh, when, when you went to Tripler, you told me you drove straight to Tripler mm -hmm. and they told you right in a spot or, or they had to go mm -hmm. through a test in order for them they, to find out? They tested me differently, like physically, and also uh, they took me to do some x ray, MRI, some ultrasound, some different things. And then they took a biopsy, and about two days later, they confirmed that it was cancer, which by, by then I already knew because of my family history and because I had something like this. So what was going through your mind when, did they call you or physically? They called me. They called you. So, they so when it. they called you and they told you, what went through your mind? By then, it's like I already knew, because it was a furring object here, something that I didn't have, and my family had it, and it was more like a like I'm out of air, like you're in a train super fast and it stops to a halt and you're like, um, what now? Um, so now you start reverse engineering time. You're thinking, okay, how much time do I have left? What should I be doing against this so it doesn't proliferate and spread more? So how do you notify your husband and your daughter? My husband, my daughter? Did, did you create a plan and say, well, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say that, you just no. called in and My daughter, it. she felt it. She felt okay. the, the marble-like thing. And my husband, I call him on the way to Tripler. And what was his his? He was like, he's very cool, calm, collective, but he yeah. was like <laughs> shocked. Like, I said, honey, I'm sorry, where are you, dude? Don't worry. So, And my family in Puerto Rico, they were going through the hurricanes, Maria, et cetera, so it was very hard to talk with my sister for guidance about cancer and stuff, because the communication, the towers were down. So tell me about you, Dad. That during that time, uh, your father was in, in Puerto Rico. Yes, yeah, so you remember he was living here with uh -huh. us and enjoying Hawaii so much. But then he wanted to see my siblings in Puerto Rico. So he was 84, so we thought, okay, that's another move. So I flew all the way there with my, my daughter, and we left him there. He was having a great time, but then the hurricanes came. 
he got very sick and the hospital didn't have enough water, electricity, even though we were in the city and he passed. So, so it's about the same time that oh, he was notified. A that couple of cancer. weeks after my father died, or almost the same time, it's like, okay, you have cancer now. It's like, I'm glad he's not here because he was a physician because he will want to take care of me. So he's resting with my mom who died after cancer as well. Second. So now that you know that you had cancer, uh, what are you doing and how is it affecting you and your, your daily activities? Well, there's no day that goes by that I don't, I'm not aware that I have cancer. And I don't want to fall into the, oh, the, it's going to be gone because I don't believe it will be gone forever. I mean, for some people, there's miracles, but... So I try to take care of my day every day and live every day I can and a lot of family time. So I slow down and enjoy more the present. So let, let me ask you about uh, cancer. Uh, exactly what cancer, do you know exactly what it is and how we get in cancer? Because there's thousands and thousands of people that get cancer. Yeah, actually in Hawaii, I believe, I was looking at the stats, 100, from 100,000 people, 400 people get diagnosed with cancer every year and about 150 die because of it, because they don't have life insurance, uh, medical insurance or they're in denial or it's too late. Um, <clears throat> so, what was the other question? That's the, the chemo, that, chemo yeah. <laughs> brain fog. <laughs> I think we have uh, the statistic. Can you show the statistic uh, about Hawaii? Uh, here the statistic uh, on this, in the whole United States, the 2017, uh, the new cancers, it's a large uh, number of dead and people that are getting cancer. Uh, can you show the other one, the, the Hawaii? Here's in the Hawaii. This is uh, the most outdated one, the 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, so here in Hawaii, uh, with this large uh, people, we estimating uh, having cancer. How Tripler, which is Tripler, is a medical center for the military, how they handle this situation? Tripler was awesome. Very fast. They did, I mean, they're treating me aggressively because it spread it during surgery. They realized that it spread to my lymph nodes, so they had to remove 19 nodes. And they have a, a tumor brain, a tumor bore, sorry, and they, it is composed of a surgeon, a plastic surgeon, a psychologist, an occupational therapist, the DNA researcher, dietitian. They're great. And then they have a chemo uh, area and they have a radiation area. What needs to improve, if anything, is a lymphedema program. Because when you get the lymph nodes removed, a lot of us start, because there's no drainage, you know, the white blood cells cannot be drained properly. You get a lot of water edema, lymphedema. And excess and it hurts a lot and it burns and it affects your mobility and everything. So I think in Hawaii we need better lymphedema programs, more occupational therapists or physical therapists that are specialized in helping us with lower the, the distension of the tissue post-surgery. So let me ask you, how do they decide to, uh, uh, to decide what treatment they're gonna do? It depends on how the cancer is or depend on your health, or how do they decide? Exactly, it depends on the cancer. Mm -hmm. type and where is it, how's your health, your support mechanisms, uh, the client has the last word, you know, the surgeon can propose, etc. but the client, they can say, I don't want anything or I want it all or whatever. In my case, they, they proposed chemotherapy and during surgery, the surgery was before the chemo, they realized that, I, that it has spread, so now I'm going to have radiation, 35 days. <clears throat> And then I'm going to have a, so I had surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, and then I'm going to have some medication with hormones for like five years. So you, you're going through different stages right now, uh, different uh, treatment. A lot of uh, pain. And so tell me how you're dealing with the pain, because you, you, I, I see that you have, you be blogging about uh, cancer and you're very positive and, and motivated and keeping yourself in, in, in a good move and a lot of people are so excited and you motivated them to stay healthy. Tell me how you, how you do that. Well, there's days that I'm very down, etc. but I don't, wanna, I don't want those to be the most than the least. Um, I, always, I, I always, before cancer, I always thought, you know, you have to live the present. Uh, you can always be planning for the future. The past is gone. 
So all you have um, is the present. So I try to think of some people have it worse than me. So what am I complaining about? And I do have a purpose in life. I have a teenager. I have a life. I have a husband, a family. I have a community. I see some clients. So, I mean, the, we, can be as, we can be as happy or as miserable as we want to. So, of course, I deal with um, medication or alternative medicine, nutrition, relaxation. I watch, now I'm watching a lot of Netflix and movies. <laughs> so yeah, you, wow. you just slow down and try to, try to be happy. Why so, not? So how does it affect your families and friends? You know, because sometimes, you know, we get sick and, and it's, it's temporary, but when it's something like this that it might last longer, it have a long effect on relationship. Yep. Tell me about that. Interestingly, some people stopped talking to me. And I think it was because they thought, oh, she's dying maybe tomorrow or the day after, and I don't know how to deal with it. I don't know what they were thinking about. <laughs> but some people stopped talking. All the people came and started talking to me. And some friends of friends started talking to me. So now on Facebook, I put stuff and just to motivate people and stuff. So, um, but the people that really care for you or even the community, they... They stick around and we try to help each other, support each other. So I believe in God, so I believe whatever happens is because it needs to be, it needs to happen, so. Well, let's talk about some of your activities that you do, you know, like working out. You still work out, you still, I've seen some pictures, you know, you doing your aerobics workout. Oh, uh, you know, in the military I used to be so fit and I used to teach Zumba and cardio kickboxing and everything. I've slowed down and now I do more like relax, yoga, and I walk with my husband, which is great because it's like, you don't need couple therapy or nothing when you're going with your spouse around the neighborhood walking, you know, it's a great communication. Kills two birds with one stone, right? Yeah. So, and it's great for, for the family. And I try to, I just slow down. I try to do exercise when I can. I don't kill myself. I don't have high expectation. Just stay healthy. <clears throat> because our immune system is so low that we cannot be pushing ourselves and get sicker. Because then we won't have chemo the next day. We won't have treatment. If we're sick, they have to stop the protocol. So how do you reinforce or, or provide a, a, a better, strong immune system to your body? How do you do that? I try to go to bed at the same time. I try to drink a lot of water. I try to stay healthy. I also... I'm, I'm in BNI, Business Network International, so I have a, a lady, and that she, I take her Juice Plus, so I, I make sure I have, even if I don't want to eat because my throat hurts or whatever, I can have all the amounts of veggies or fruit that I need. And I try to eat more vegan and more raw because cooking kills a lot of nutrients, as we know. So who is at risk? Is everybody at risk? Uh, to I think everybody is at risk. Regardless of the age? I think everybody's at risk, and I think we need to be more conscientious and actually asking our, our families about their, their medical conditions. It could be mental, it could be physical, one of them could be cancer. If we're not informed, then we might be a victim of that. History repeats itself. Uh, like I said, I already had in the back of my mind, my mom had breast cancer, my sister had breast cancer, so I knew there was a probability. Now my other sister is getting checked because she might get it too. And also, you know, just like in Puerto Rico, the sun, we were all exposed to the sun, we don't protect ourselves, we can have melanoma, we can have skin cancer. If we're eating a lot of dead animals, uh, carcasses, uh, is, um, it won't be digested. We only digest like this, right? And we have like 25 feet of intestines. So what we eat and how we eat it, affects too. So the environment and what we put in our bodies too. Even lotions, even lipsticks, there's some lipstick that they have lead and we're putting that through our pores. So we have to be very conscientious of what we put in our bodies. Oh, it's so much that we don't know. But we're going to take a quick break mm -hmm. and we're going to come back and continue talking story and learning about how we can stay healthy Thank and you. fight cancer. Thank you. Kindness. Pass it on. A message from 
the foundation for a better life. Planning all week for the day of the big game. Watching at home just doesn't feel the same. What on the list is who's gonna drive? It's nice to know you're gonna get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. Choose a DD. Captain of our team is the DD. For every game day, assign a designated driver. Uh, welcome back. We're here with Dr. Uh, Merva Stens to talk about her fight and her personal experience against cancer. Well, we were talking about all the different factors that can cause cancer. Uh, we would talk about tobacco, the way we eat, physical activities uh, that can help us to, you know, maintain in a good health. Uh, let's talk about a little bit diet. You know, you, you change your diet uh, as you start taking, you know, a chemotherapy. Talk to me about that. Well, my, my father was a sports medicine doctor. So he, was, he was always into fitness, so we were very aware of that in my family. And my mother was a dietitian. So we were very conscientious about it as well. I've been, um, I was a vegetarian for like over 20 years since I joined the military, so I guess it's 30. Wow. And Go fast. <laughs> yeah, lately I've been more vegan because um, there's a lot of food that we eat. It's not preaching, it's just, I mean, the literature. No, no, it's, 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 so tell us, we want to know. <clears throat> so anything that makes you makes your cells get all bigger or swollen, like cheese, it is not good for the body because it, um, it won't be processed as needed. So I don't, don't intake any um, cow milk. Uh, try my best not to have cheese, even though I used to love cheese. Uh, I do love cheese. Uh-huh. Um, try to avoid things that are pretty much smoked, burned, barbecued. Um, Try not to eat late because you're not going to digest it. It's just going to stay there and it's going to putrefy. You know, it's going to be rotten. And that's why there's so much colon cancer and here in Hawaii as well. And so try to drink a lot of water and try to drink filtered water. I know we say, oh, but the water is good. No, we don't know that. Even the fishes, if there's a lot of mercury, you're eating that. Again, I don't want to be... Um, I don't want to be preaching, but if you go to PETA, P-E-T-A, mm -hmm. that's a, a company, a, a group, that they show you how many animals that are not organically raised or whatever, they, they eat corn and they have a lot of pesticide or they have a lot of medication and they even eat their own feces and when they die, it's in a way that is so cruel that all the toxins come out and that's what we are actually later on eating so if you can stay away from things that are processed and are not really what nature gave you do it because it's gonna help you i mean I, i'm gonna do it for the rest of my life so be healthy well you, you mentioned a lot of things that i do <laughs> that i need to change thank you so much uh but let's talk about uh Cooking. Uh, now I have a video right here that you was learning how to cook some of this great and wonderful food. Oh, this is Dr. Elena Maganto. She's a health coach here in Hawaii. I can give you her info if you contact me. So we're trying to eat as as healthy as possible. We have couscous there, spinach. The greener, the better it is. So how much influence uh, the food has in our body? Because so we, we, we eat and everything, <coughs> and everything and all, but we really don't know what is good and what is bad for us. Yeah, and we eat more than we're actually going to process or need or digest. So it, it's got to go somewhere, and it's going to make us sick. Many of our diseases have to do with that. So preventing is the best. It's good to eat like every three hours to keep your, your sugar level up, and you have the energy versus not eating the whole day, then going at home and eating three plates. Or I eat in small bowls, and I try to eat like every three hours, like maybe three bigger meals and two snacks. And I try not to eat after five or six, because for what? I'm just going to go to sleep. 
So what about sugar intake? Everything has sugar. Cancer uh, loves sugar. Cancer cells love sugar. I used to love frosting. Forget the cake. I like the frosting. <laughs> I give my frosting. cake to my husband. No, I'm avoiding it so much. Cancer loves sugar and stress. And in the Army, I, I was a research psychologist, but I was deployed to Iraq and different places, and it was very stressful, and I had to deal with a lot of problems and clients that ha they have PTSD, etc. So it was a very stressful environment. So avoid sugar and stress as much as you can. Oh, wow, that's very difficult things to do. <laughs> so when you was cooking and, and you learning that, uh, so you eating uh, more vegetable, uh, green food, and, and things that is, is not preserved. Less processed. Yeah. Everything that is in a, in a can or in a bottle or most things, they have to have preservatives, things that keep them in best shape possible. Those things don't tend to be healthy. So we got to read something I like of Dr. Elena, not only because she's Hispanic. What yeah. I like her is that she is a graduate from Harvard. She has a postdoctorate in microbiology. So we go to Costco, different places, and she, she teaches me not only read the label, but the ingredients in the back and the synonyms, the other words that sugar has or bad things for your body. So you can eat cleaner. So you, you think that the industry is doing enough to educate or to make sure that we eat a product that is not going to contaminate? No, I don't think so because I think uh, most corporations that have money, like pharmaceutical and different companies like Kentucky Fried Chicken or whatever, they're going to push for saying that that's healthy. So we try to eat or fall in love with food through our eyes, right? So if it looks tempting and people, are, I think it's disrespectful when I'm eating or when I'm at home and I have people crunching on Kentucky Fried Chicken or whatever because I don't eat that animal. I don't eat animals at all. So I'm like, I wish it was banned. I was, if you're vegan, you don't have to see those commercials, etc. So no, I don't think we're doing enough. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of sad that as a researcher, published researcher, eh, we are not putting enough energy, money, and time on curing cancer. Look at me. I have to have not drink, but intake through IV poison. Poison that is killing not only the cancer, hopefully, but it's also killing healthy cells, brain cells, skin cells, my hair fell, you know? So it's sad that we're not putting enough into curing cancer. So cancer is, it's not a guarantee that it's gonna be cured. It's a, it's, it's I don't a think so. You can talk to other people, they're gonna say miraculously they're cured, whatever. I don't believe it. They're cells. And for example, in my case, that it was in one breast, and here in, under the armpit, I decided the other breast too, because cells can move in seconds. So why would I do that, only take this away, and have to come back two years later maybe and take the other breast, right? So prophylactically, I don't take everything away. Uh, uh, males here in Hawaii, prostate cancer, colon cancer is a big thing, but people don't get checked. A lot of, and I'm not saying here in Hawaii, but at least in Puerto Rico, a lot of machismo. I don't need to check my prostate. Okay, then you might lose, and you might lose your life too. So how do we get checked? We just go to the doctor and request Yes, you say you're educated, and you say my family, like I always said about my family, you always say your family has this history. Please just screen me, and they'll screen you before it's too late. Wow. You can lose not only those organs, but your life as well. So let me ask you, how do you stay so motivated because I always think about you uh, sometime when I got a headache or my back hurt. Uh, the other day I went ice skating with my daughter, I fell, and, and as mm. soon as I fell in, in the ground, and I was like, oh, and I need to take a break. But I thought about you, I say, this is nothing. And she's going through cancer, and she is an inspiration to keep myself motivated. How, how do you do it every day? What is the secret? Oh, thank you. My father was very positive, my, my mother, my family. In the army, everything was like, suck it up and drive on, you know that? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I jumped from planes, I did different <laughs> things. So I think I've always been in that same motto. And that's what I help people with peak performance because I'm like, what are we gonna do? I mean, it, we have times to ventilate and feel sad and down, completely understood. But then if you're gonna do it again, like, I don't see clients that come every week to complain to me. No, you complain, but you're trying to work on something. I think while you complain about things and get out of your system and share and kumbaya and everything, you should also be thinking about 
okay, what can I do about it? Be responsible about it. So I just think God gave me this life. I'm still alive. There's a, there's a reason for me to be here, not just to be sucking oxygen. There has ever been one day that you just get up in the morning and feel like, wow, I have cancer. What am I going to do with my life? Um, maybe at the beginning, I already know that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep trying to beat it so the cancer doesn't take me away from my life earlier than I want. I want to see my daughter getting married and stuff or whatever she decides to do. So I think it's my responsibility to take care of it. So I, if I'm down, I go up again. That's what I like about you. Uh, highly motivating. <laughs> well, you know, we're almost out of time, and, and we like to ask you uh, to give us some advice or, or recommendations uh, to those who's watching the show right now or your personal experience fighting against cancer. Well, thank you again. Get screened. Go to the doctor, find all the information from your family, the history. Avoid things, uh, everything with moderation, eat healthy, drink water, go to bed early, and live happy. Enjoy every day. Positive attitude, right? Positive attitude. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Well, uh, we want to say uh, thank you so much for watching Hispanic Hawaii. And don't forget, you can rewatch this show and many other shows at Think Tech Hawaii. Dakan. Gracias y hasta luego. Gracias.